Welcome, my friends, to another Patho video. Today we continue our discussion on the regulation of bone remodeling. Using the knowledge obtained about the regulation of the BMU in the last video, scientists decided to develop a monoclonal antibody that acts very similarly to OPG. If it acts like OPG, hopefully you understand that it would favor bone retention. This antibody is called denosumab, or prolia, and has been approved for treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis. It is given subcutaneously every six months. Denosumab reduces the risk of both vertebral and nonvertebral fractures. Remember that the interaction of rank L and rank results in the production of osteoclasts. Let's show how prolia works. Prolia blocks the rank L rank interaction. To prevent the formation of osteoclasts. Less osteoclasts means less bone breakdown. During prolia treatment, it is important to monitor the patient's calcium levels, since prolia can cause hypocalcemia. Calcium levels in the blood and extracellular fluid can affect neurons' permeability of sodium. Calcium will bind to sodium channels and keep them closed. Since prolia causes hypocalcemia, calcium levels will be lower, so more sodium channels will be open. More sodium goes from high to low, entering the cell to cause depolarization and greater frequency of action potentials. If calcium levels are low enough, conditions of excitation like paresthesias, muscle twitching, and laryngeal spasms may occur. Due to the rapid turnover rate of the jawbone, prolia treatment increases the risk for something called osteonecrosis of the jaw, where the jawbone begins to deteriorate. For this reason, it is important to assess dental status on a regular interval. It is also important to regularly assess for signs of infection because prolia treatment may lead to neutropenia. Another important drug that regulates the activities of the BMU is known as teriparatide or forteo. This drug is a recombinant PTH and is indicated for the treatment of osteoporosis and glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis. But wait, I thought earlier we mentioned that PTH causes breakdown of bone matrix. Well, it was discovered that if PTH is given in low intermittent doses, like once a day, Forteo has the opposite effect, or it has an anabolic effect on bone. It does this by increasing the numbers of osteoblasts and inhibiting their apoptosis. It is unclear why low intermittent levels of PTH and high sustained levels of PTH have the opposite effect. Forteo tends to cause hypercalcemia, so it's important to monitor for nausea and vomiting, constipation, lethargy, and muscle weakness. Let's review why hypercalcemia tends to slow systems down. Remember that calcium will bind to sodium channels and keep them closed. Since Forteo causes hypercalcemia, calcium levels will be higher in the ECF, so more sodium channels will be closed. Since less sodium can enter the cell, the neurons will become more hyperpolarized. 
and send a lower frequency of action potentials. This brings about conditions of less activation, like constipation, lethargy, and muscle weakness. The parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland secrete a hormone called calcitonin, which helps, helps calcium be retained in the bone. Drug formulations of this hormone have been developed that are used to treat osteoporosis. This drug may be administered by nasal spray, or it may be injected. Another drug, known as raloxifene or Avista, used for breast cancer prophylaxis in postmenopausal women with osteoporosis, It acts like estrogen in regards to bone. And remember, estrogen acts to increase osteoblast activity over osteoclast activity, favoring bone formation. This drug is a selective estrogen receptor modifier, or CIRM. This indicates that it has favorable effects on bone, but will decrease the risk of uterus and breast cancers. However, it should be noted that this drug will increase the risk for venous thrombotic events and embolic strokes like regular estrogen does. This concludes our video on bone regulation. Thanks for watching.